Don't trust him. It's all lies. Hey there, it's David, your trusty YouTube friend. And today I want to talk to you about the current pandemic that's going on. It's the pandemic of bullshit statistics. And unfortunately with this pandemic, I don't think we'll ever have a vaccine. See, this virus is going to continue to exist as long as the majority of people are well-intentioned but uninformed, which is to say we're in this for forever. People and corporations will continue to take advantage of you as long as you give them the opportunity. I legitimately believe that every single number out there is a lie. And you know, this is not a popular opinion these days because you always hear about how companies and leaders pride themselves on being metrics driven. But you know, those numbers, they're all lies. And I don't even think this is a conspiracy theory because I used to work in marketing, the professional business of lies. Now I would love to show you how deep this rabbit hole of lies goes, but honestly, I don't think you're ready for it because you're never gonna look at a number the same way again. Numbers in the news, numbers in ads, numbers at work. You're just gonna look at all of it and think this is all BS. So it's decision time for you. You take the blue pill, you close the browser, the story ends, you go back to believing whatever you wanna believe. Or you take the red pill, you subscribe, and I show you just how deep this rabbit hole goes. Um, I trust if you're still watching at this point that you've subscribed because uh, I can't actually verify that. Here's a number I see a lot of influencers in my industry spit out. They say the average Salesforce salary is $150,000 a year. Now, whether or not you're familiar with the Salesforce industry is irrelevant. The fact is, there is someone shoving a shocking number down your throat to try to get something from you. Maybe they want your money, or maybe they want your attention to sell ads, or maybe worse, they want you to subscribe to their crappy YouTube channel. And who wouldn't want to make $150,000 a year? You know, there's something so powerful about that number that just draws in all your hopes and dreams such that the average person just can't let it go. But that number, like all other numbers, is a lie. Do people worldwide make $150,000 a year doing Salesforce? Or is it just people in a particularly well-paid region? Uh, does everyone make $150,000 a year? Or is it only people in certain roles, perhaps more technical roles? Is that number only a base salary? Or does it include everything, including estimated benefits, bonuses, stock, etc.? How would you even calculate that? And while we're at it, where'd you even get that number from? Did you survey people asking people for their salaries? If so, is it crazy to think that people who make more money are more likely to respond to the salary? So is the claim that Salesforce professionals make $150,000 a year true? Well, I mean, maybe if you look at it from a very specific angle with a very relaxed set of assumptions, sure. But is it the clean truth? Nah. Here's another stat I hear at work all the time. So we might be evaluating a product and they might claim they have a 15 minute response time when you email their customer service. And you know, that sounds great. Who wants to wait for customer service? But what does that number actually mean? Like if I email their customer service and I get back an automated response, does that count? I mean, it's technically a response, a worthless response, but does it still count? Now you might try to be smart and call a company out on this. You might say, hey, automatic emails don't count. But you know what? The company might be smart too, and they'll play ball. And instead of sending you an automated email, they'll send you a different automated email that actually looks like it's from an actual person. And it'll ask you all these generic questions like what percent of your users are actually impacted by this. And, and you're, you won't be making any meaningful progress towards solving your problem at all. And at the end of the day, that 15 minute number was a lie all along. Another example that you might see in an ad somewhere, four out of five dentists recommend Colgate brand toothpaste. I mean, you know, that sounds fantastic. Heck, I use Colgate toothpaste and I love it. Mm. Let's go deeper into this. Let's take that same number and flip it around and say 20% of dentists do not recommend Colgate. I mean, that sounds horrible. We just took the exact same number, we repackaged it and got the completely opposite result. That's interesting. How do they even find that four out of five dentists recommend Colgate? Do they send out a survey asking you to choose a number between one to 10 of how likely you are to recommend Colgate? I mean, what's the cutoff for a recommendation? Is it the score one or is it the score eight? Also, which dentist did you include in your poll and what's your sample size? Did you possibly pay the dentist before they took your survey? Or did you take them out to a fancy dinner the night before? Who knows? But I'll bet you that the Colgate marketing team pulled every string possible to get the absolute highest number to include in their ad. Final example, I'm pulling from some random resume I found on the internet. Because it's not just companies that lie to you, it's people too. 
So this guy claims that he was a top 5% employee at his company. He probably got some superb score on his employee performance review and only 5% of employees get that rating. Now, this might seem legit at first, but remember, all numbers are lies, especially when people are trying to get something from you, in this case, a job interview. This guy is not a top 5% employee. He's not even director level. Sure, maybe he got a great score on one of his performance reviews, but that really only compares him to other people on his level. Plus, performance reviews happen all the time. Maybe he got one great performance review, but all other reviews are trash. The numbers just don't add up. These are just a few examples, but this kind of reasoning applies to every number you're gonna see. Yes, every number. So the next time you see a number, I want you to start to question it. And the more you dig into it, the more you'll see that it's just a lie. But honestly, who has time to investigate everything, right? Who's gonna read the fine print, the full report, and cross-verify every possible number, assumption, and methodology? Plus, I'm not even creative enough to think of all the ways someone might try to lie to me. And professional liars know this, so they'll continue doing this because no one's gonna keep them in check. All you can really do is ignore the numbers. They only exist to trick you. You really can only trust your gut. And the sooner you do this, the stronger you'll be building your gut instincts. All of this might sound a little depressing, but in a strange way, it's actually empowering because now you have the power to use numbers to your advantage. Are you looking for a raise at work? Well, tell your boss that the average Salesforce salary is $150,000 a year, and let's see if they play ball. Let's say your boss does play ball, and they counter, and they say, well, it's only people in California raising up that average because of their high cost of living. In which case, you counter back with another number, and you say, sure, well, most Salesforce jobs are in California, and Salesforce just happens to have the highest percentage of remote jobs available. Certainly, the coronavirus will help pad your stats there. At the end of the day, it's just moves and counter moves in a never ending game of lies. You can also use this new power to turn your biggest weaknesses into strengths. Let's say you build an app at work that has an abysmal 30% customer satisfaction rating. Now, normally knowing this, you just curl up in a ball and cry, but let's flip this around. Let's say you increase that number from 30 to 50%, which should be pretty easy to do because 50% is still a horrible customer satisfaction score. Well, all of a sudden, you can add a new bullet to your resume that says you increase customer satisfaction by 20 percentage points, which sounds massive. Final example. Now, this is something I did at work once, and I'm really not proud of it, but I'll share it with you anyways. So we were launching a new Salesforce implementation, and one of our launch goals was to have an 80% user login rate. Now, this is a pretty common launch goal meant to ensure adoption, but remember, all numbers are lies. So what we did was, the week before, we talked to every manager and asked them to email everyone to remind people to log into Salesforce. And sure enough, people did, and we just crushed our numbers and we patted ourselves on the back. Now, were we successful because we built a great product that everyone wanted to use? No, 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 not really. Heck, we could have built garbage and everyone still would have logged in anyways just because their manager asked them to. We gamed the system, and it's just too easy to do that when numbers are involved. The lesson here is that numbers are just so powerful and you can do bad, bad things with them. Well, now it's decision time for you. You who took the red pill and subscribed to my channel. You now know exactly how numbers are abused and also how easy it is to abuse numbers for your own personal gain. Do you choose to continue the cycle of lies and reap the benefits that come with them? Or do you grow a conscience, make a tiny dent in a cycle that continues with or without you? and watch as your career falls behind as other less ethical people take advantage of the system. That's a decision you gotta make for yourself. And if you're brave, I'm curious to see what decision you make in the comments below. Thank you everyone, this is David, and I'm out.